Welcome to the most adult channel you'll ever find out there. It's Curtis YZ, and get ready to strap yourself in for the most adult stuff ever. Warning, 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 warning. This content is not for children. That being said, prepare yourself for today's topic. Terminator 1 Tech Noir scene. It all starts here on Curtis YZ Channel. What's up, everyone? It's Curtis YZ, and today I'm going over... The last, the final scene that I'm going to be covering on Terminator 1, and that is the Tech Noir dance club scene. It is one of my favorite scenes upon rewatching Terminator 1 before making any of these videos. This scene grabbed me so hard. Every scene in this movie, it, it fits so well with every other piece, and especially the action pieces, but this one in particular is just, there's a lot of things I just want to point out in this scene. So we're going to jump into it. But I don't want to leave. I think there's a guy following me. All right, now listen, Miss Connor. Now listen carefully. You'll be safe till we get there, but stay visible. I'll have a car there in a hot minute. Okay. Probably get like some sort of copyright strike for the song, but I don't care because it's worth dissecting, it's worth talking about, nor am I monetized. I was what at one point. That's not the case anymore. Specifically, the music, though, in this scene. Perfect for this scene. Everything that he does is very robotic, as usual. Kind of why I like this first one. I like Arnold being the bad guy is almost more entertaining. You know, obviously, as a kid, uh, he's your role model and you don't want to see him as the bad guy and that's why we love T2 so much but now looking at it he's the best bad guy ever in my opinion I think Arnold just kills it Robert Patrick does a great job in T2 this is scarier this song gets stuck in my head all the time because of the way the score uh, the way the score sets in, you'll hear it. It starts right here. Hear that? This is so great what they're doing here. I love the use of the slow-mo. I love the... It's like the song almost slows down, even though it's not. But the way that they slur it with the like ambient noise is just so cool. It really blends in. To make such a poppy song like this and to blend it in with a horror sound is just so well done. And again, the, the use of the slow motion, sh this shot is kind of complicated. Just how beautiful this shot is played through. Like just, she ducks, you know, and right when he's looking her over, it just looks so good. Scanning, you can imagine he's like scanning and he just doesn't see. And then again, the slow motion with the the way that the song is just fading into nothing. And then this, I the very first time watching it, I didn't know who's bad, who's good. I knew for sure Arnold was bad because you see that in the beginning. Kyle Reese also was kind of scary to me at first. You know, I didn't know who he was. You know, if anything, his arrival was almost more scary because he's in pain. But I remember seeing that and I'm like, oh, he's there. I was really in her shoes when this moment happened. It was just a freaky moment, and especially for her, and when you're able to relate. And uh, you know, even as a kid, I was able to see these things and uh, understand the depth of the situation. And just the slow motion, the, the way that this whole music fades into this horror is so amazing. I'll just play through it again just so you can hear that. I, I, I just love that. But this is really where the tension builds up. It's just amazing the way that this... The music is just really where it's at. I love this whole this, this setting of this um, nightclub. And I always love watching Kyle Reese struggling right here just to clear the area. It just shows that he is a good person. He, he's uh, he's trying to you know keep people safe even though he's in a 
extremely uh, desperate. You know, he still cared. And the music here is great. It's just really cool how Kyle Reese struggled to even get a shot off there. It just really shows the realism here. He has to play it really strategic, and uh, he's doing a really good job. And, and Arnold just plays such a good job using that Uzi, making that look all so robotic. He really does. He looks like a robot. And even the way he handles the gun looks robotic. And normally you could say that gun doesn't have like a lot of recoil like it really would. You wouldn't be able to handle that with one hand. In this case, all these things are out the door because he's a Terminator. He's got like really, really strong hands so he can control that thing. And it looks like he's just like able to manage it. That's what's so great about this movie is like every flaw normally would be like, oh, that gun would have more recoil than that. Well, now it's like, no, nah, this is a machine. He can handle that. It looks incredible. It kind of reminds me of like watching those uh, little robot, little rollers. Uh, I'll show a picture over here. Uh, and when you watch them fire, because they're so, like, stabilized, the machine gun is not moving. It's very just still. It's it's jiggling. It's vibrating, but it it doesn't really move. probably remember this same exact shot in T2 when T-1000 throws Arnold out the window. It's kind of funny when you watch the original, like, how many things were kind of remade iconic again in T2. That's why T2 is so successful. It took all those little things. Come with me if you want to live. And Arnold said it in the next one and made it even more popular, if you will, probably. This is really where the action starts in this movie, and it's just... And ironically enough, this is some of the only um, some of the only interaction Michael Bean has with my Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie. It's just this little bit. Come on! The way Arnold runs is so cool, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he, Arnold said in an interview that this is the most running things he ever did was for this shot. Because of the low cam, how many times they had to do that low cam shot. And this is the first time we see the, uh, the red vision. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. Arnold runs cooler than Tom Cruise. And <laughs> this is the coolest thing right here. Watch this. Arnold's face right here is so distressed. <laughs> I love it though. It's probably the least robotic thing about his performance right there, but it's still such a great shot. It gives, it gives the viewer a horrific, because uh, his face looks horrified in a way. His face looks horrified, so it kind of gives that the viewer, especially an Arnie fan, that, oh, you know, shock, because we don't see Arnold with uh, that kind of a look very often. But uh, pay attention to this guy, because we do see him also in Terminator 2 as the cameraman when Arnold gets thrown out the window. This is the cameraman, if you didn't know. I love this guy's voice. This is 1L19. I got a hit-and-run felony, sir. Arnold has no eyebrows now. Late model Ray Ford headed westbound on 7. He's really moving. But it looks great. I mean, like, the, the attention to detail, the acid on his jacket to create the smoke. Everything is done so great, uh, so, to such great effect. Hold it! Arnold might have actually put in a little bit of force. <laughs> he just tossed the bat. It's such a great scene, though. It is such a great scene. All of this. And the way he drives off, too, looks very robotic, looks very perfect. 
Like he just, like the machine knew what he was doing, you know? He knows how to drive very perfectionately, very systematically. You know what I mean? Michael Bean also mentioned in an interview that these cars were going really fast. I mean, I know it probably doesn't look very fast, but what you're seeing here is some actually dangerous stunts that these people did and pulled off to, and still to great effect. So just major props. You've been targeted for termination. I love the music during all this too. This is the best. This is 1L19, westbound on Olympic, approaching Overland. <laughs> westbound on Olympic. <laughs> it's great dubbing, too. Amazing this job. Is a mistake. I didn't do anything. No, but you will. It's very important that you live. This isn't true. How could that man just get up after you did? It's not a man. Machine. Terminator. Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. Damn, it, it, they're hauling ass for sure. This is the beginning of the movie. What a way to get you hooked. I love the music here. Shots like this where it's uh, there's a lot of smoke, I used to think was kind of stupid, but now I love it because, uh, you know, I, I've dealt with enough actual firearms and seen enough actual impacts of uh, projectiles, even though these are lasers. There is more dust than there is anything else. You don't ever see fireballs. and So to see that looks way more realistic and impactful to me now, uh, and it looks way cooler. It looks like there's actually lasers hitting the the dusty ground, the smoke looks really, really cool to me now. Uh, but as a kid, I thought that looked stupid, obviously, because, you know, kids don't know any better and they think explosions are ev everything. Uh, it's not the case. The smoke looks way cooler. Let's look at that again. Yeah. <laughs> But look at this introduction. I love this introduction. You got that skull there, the background. The machines rose from the ashes of the nuclear fire. Their war to exterminate mankind had raged for decades, but the final battle would not be fought in the future. It would be fought here, in our present, tonight, in 1984. But wow, what an introduction that is. Look at look at how perfect that is. That way before Hans Zimmer or anything, Brad Fidel was doing that to amazing effect. Wow, yeah, iconic music. But this this title though is really great. Uh, I'll just skip to the end. I love how it all um, comes together. Yeah, that's badass. I'm sorry. That is, that is some cool, uh, cool logo design and everything. <laughs> I've done like six videos on Terminator One. I'm just saying, it's a great movie. Nothing against Terminator Two. I just, Terminator One is highly underrated in comparison to Terminator Two. Although people still recognize it as a great movie, I just think there's a lot to this the first one that the second one doesn't really carry as much over in reality when we when we really sit back and think about it and that's why I've kind of clung to the first one the second one's great it, it'll always be great and it still is great to me but the first one is just getting better and better the more I watch it now anyways that's my complete video series that's that's gonna wrap up Terminator so I can move on thanks for watching everybody if you like content like this I'll probably I'll probably get around to Terminator 2 analysis just because can't do Terminator 1 and not review Terminator 2, in my opinion. I'm sorry. Can't, I can't go this deep into Terminator 1 and not go into Terminator 2, so I'll probably go into Terminator 2. So if you like content like this, expect to see that, and hit that like button, and then go down there, subscribe, become a member of the Curtis YZ Subscribers Group of People Club for Adults Today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy.